Hey guys, I'm Hako, and this is my guide on farming Hellblade Glavinus in Monster Hunter Stories 2. This is really targeted towards newer players who just hit endgame, and I wanted to give some tips on how to endgame farm. Let's go over some important information before you start farming. Currently, there are three ways to obtain Hellblade Glavinus' egg. There's the online co-op quest Explore Fire Eggs, and the online co-op quest Slay Hellblade Glavinus, and there's also the non-online co-op option, which is finding a super rare high-ranked den, otherwise known as like a, a diamond den. Don't bother farming it through resetting areas for the diamond dens because it's just not worth it. It has something like a 1% chance of spawning, so it's just not worth the time and effort. The Explore Fire Eggs quest is the best way to farm everything. You get the rainbow eggs with SR tickets, which gives you the best genes for maxing out Hellblade, and since you have to kill him anyways, you get the parts for his armor and weapons. While going through this den, it's important that you go around and collect all the chests because they can contain bottle caps, which you need for buying SR tickets, and sometimes the chests can have SR tickets in them as well. SR tickets are just really important for farming rainbow eggs, and if you're just looking to get Hellblade, then you can use a normal ticket or a uh, rare ticket as well. They all have the same chance to get the egg, the only difference being is that the better the ticket, the better the chance of getting a rainbow egg. I also want to point out that in this quest, there are three areas with obtainable eggs. You cannot get the Hellblade egg in these areas because they only offer other fire monster eggs, but you should still grab them because you can still get good fire genes off of them. I suggest leaving each one of these areas with the first rainbow egg that you pick up because some of these areas trigger fights after picking up the third egg and you run the risk of losing hearts and taking more time to finish the den. Hellblade is weak to water attacks, so you'll want to build and max out a water blade or sword and shield because his tail and head are weak to slashing, but I recommend attacking his tail first because once that breaks, it'll cause him to fall down and open up crit attacks. You don't have to use water monsters only because farming these late game monsters kind of rely more on buffed up stats rather than weaknesses. So you and your monsters attack, health, and defense scales with level. So someone who's level 80 is going to be way stronger than someone who's going to be level 60, right? So usually when you're around that level it doesn't matter what monster you use so long as they're not weak to fire so i normally use like nergigante or bolt reaver or astalos to fight hellblade even though none of those monsters are water based i do however run fire defense armor like dread queen rathian's armor because even though i'm like around 70 level 70 in this video i can still get one shot if i wear the wrong armor that's weak to fire attacks but if you do happen to be a lower level attempting this quest, then I'd suggest picking up Nergigante because he's pretty easy to grind out and max out, and you want to have a buffed out Nergigante to help carry this fight. Defeating Hellblade can be challenging if you're a low level, which is anywhere between like level 40 to 50. Because it's an online co-op mission, anyone can join and help you, but it's a bit risky because you, you can have someone who's level 80 join and help carry you, or you may get like a level 40 player who isn't strong enough and you end up getting wiped. If you get wiped, you get kicked from the den and you lose that chance to get the egg. You can choose to run this den with an AI partner, which this option actually is not too bad. The AI is surprisingly helpful and will heal you every time you get low and are always the same level as you, but at times they play the rock, paper, scissor mechanic like pretty bad and will lose head to heads, which sometimes they get one shot, sometimes they survive, but it's just kind of a, uh, it's not really reliable. So either way, both options have pros and cons. Hellblade starts off with power attacks and then uses speed attacks after he buffs himself. Like any other fight, you do your best to counter his power attacks with speed attacks and his speed attacks with tech attacks. His AoE attacks do hurt, but if you have the right fire defense armor maxed out, you should be able to survive it. Be sure to have healing items and you should be fine. After you beat him, you want to look for the black egg with red streaks. There is a chance that you don't get Hellblade's egg because you can also get Teostra or Dread Queen Rathian instead, which causes this grind to be a bit more painful. Another way you can farm him is through the online co-op quest called Slay Hellblade Glavinus, but this quest is the hardest in terms of uh, boss strength. It is a 9 star quest. The plus side of this is that it guarantees the monster part Hellblade Powder as a quest reward, which counts as 10 points for crafting, which is a lot. So you could potentially get two of those in one run because you get one for killing him and one for just completing the quest. The downside is that you hardly ever get rainbow eggs since it doesn't require any tickets. This method is more for just those who want to farm armor and weapons, but it's pretty difficult. It takes a while. I do want to mention that there's also an 8 star subquest that you can repeat infinitely called Psycho Blaze Black Knight. This den is the easiest to complete, but it's pretty rare to get a rainbow egg. And in my experience, I hardly get the actual Hellblaze egg itself doing this quest. So I really only recommend farming this quest if you're just trying to get the material for gear. 
For those of you who are only interested in obtaining the Hellblade gear, let's go over crafting real quick. With the Hellblade material you can get, you can craft its armor and three weapons. Each piece of gear can be upgraded up to five times. It takes about 76 points of material to fully upgrade one piece of gear to level five. So if you're looking to max out every Hellblade related item, then you're looking at about 304 points of Hellblade crafting material, which is a lot. So if you do plan on doing all that, then just be prepared. You're going to be grinding for a while. Hopefully this guide does help you guys figure out how you're going to grind it out and whether or not you want to go full out because there is a lot of grinding to do. Definitely a good monster to have on your team and it's hard in both PvE and PvP so he is someone to consider. If you have any questions feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer uh, but other than that that's all I have for you guys. I These are kind of things I wish I knew going into the game but there weren't that many answers on the internet at the time so hopefully these tips are helpful for you guys so other than that that's all i have though so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time adios